So Maria, how did you get into astrology? Well, I was exposed to it um, probably later than some people. I was 33, and I was in a place in my life where I think on some level I realized that things weren't uh, going that well, and uh, I wanted some kind of a change, but it wasn't really defined yet. And it was at that time that um, a friend suggested that I might try studying astrology. And uh, uh, so I used it to try to figure out where I was and where my life was going at that time. I think this is when a lot of people, you know, you get really obsessed with it in the very beginning because it's telling you something that you need to know. Some people might find therapy or guidance counseling. I found astrology. And by the time I had figured myself out, I was hooked on it as an objective study. So how has astrology impacted your life, both uh, personally and as a career? I mean, weren't you the leader of ACS for a while? Well, that was uh, after I was in astrology, but my first career was in arts. I, I have a fine arts degree. I taught for the first few years out of college, and um, then I was a gallery painter and um, uh, exhibitor and taught some on the side. but. Uh, at the time I was exposed to astrology, I was exhibiting in three commercial galleries in San Francisco and doing quite well with it and starting to do a little bit of commercial art. Um, the astrology actually gradually took over. Um, I had, uh, uh, in the mid-70s, I tried to combine the two interests for a while in a small metaphysical store and consignment arts and crafts gallery. But by the time I got through my balsamic moon phase, which was at the, at the end, I had uh, really convinced myself that, that uh, I didn't need to balance the two, that what I really wanted to do at that point was write and be an astrologer. So I took my professional exam with AFA at first and uh, started teaching and uh, consulting in astrology after that. And that actually became a whole new phase for me that was dominant for quite quite a long time. I, um, I did go to ACS originally as the art director, but uh, I married the publisher, <laughs> and very sadly he, he uh, became sick with cancer. This was Neil? Years later. Mm -hmm. So I ran the company for eight years as administrator. I, um, was also a very active astrologer, and I had written some books for the company and computer reports. Um, I uh, finally had to hire someone to replace myself as the art director because I couldn't manage both with administration, so I had not picked up a paintbrush for probably 15 years when I uh, finally decided I wanted my creative work back on the front burner, and I moved east and remarried. This was eight years after Neil died. And uh, then I started painting seriously again. So now I'm actually doing both again. And I, uh, my coming out on the re-emergence of the art was, was really, I think, pretty much in my latest book, Moontide Soul Passages, because I put several of my newer paintings and also those of my middle daughter in the book <laughs> because I wanted to um, uh, evoke an intuitive understanding of the moon and her phases, and I could uh, do that by incorporating art and uh, poetry and mythology into uh, what is also a pretty, um, I think, thorough academic um, study of the moon and her phases with a lot of examples. But since the moon is the right brain and the intuitive, you know, more subconscious side of our mind, I thought it was also important to evoke her intuitively. So um, just for our viewers, uh, what was Neil famous for? They might not know. What would you... What was Neil famous as astrologers? We know what Neil, but yeah. what was the, the common person doesn't know anything about astrology, doesn't know who Neil is, they need to know. Neil Nicholson um, was a primary pioneer of computer technology for astrologers. Uh, he had um, been an IBM um, systems engineer uh, at the 
headquarters office. He had been uh, in IBM for uh, about 17 years, I think. But he was interested, always interested in new age things. And so he uh, had the idea that uh, maybe he could program the IBM computers to calculate astrological charts. So um, he set out to do that after having attended a, a workshop um, with Zipporah Dobbins in 1971. And uh, he was really inspired to see if he could do it. So this was when uh, computers were big mainframes. <laughs> and uh, so on the uh, after hours, he programmed his first charts. And then um, by 1973, he had uh, his little home business because he was calculating charts for astrologers then who were otherwise having to do them by hand with logarithms. <laughs> and uh, uh, he uh, decided that um, he wanted to actually start a business with it. So um, he bought a computer, a mainframe computer, and installed it in an extra room in his home. And by 1973, he had decided that uh, uh, his career as, at IBM was interfering with his business. <laughs> so he, uh, he quit IBM and started formally started Astro Computing Services. And then in um, 1976, he published the uh, first entirely computer-generated ephemeris. That was the first version of the American ephemeris, which became by far the most popular one used, I think, internationally. Oh yeah, when I was uh, 14, I met my teacher in Boulder, and she, she taught me how to calculate charts by hand right out of that ephemeris. Right. I was like, who's this Neil guy? And I was like, man, that was a great thing he did. 